If the only thing you learned in your CS degree was how to write mediocre code, you probably are cooked, but you also missed the entire point of your degree. The much more important skill that you should have learned is systems thinking and iterative problem solving. This means thinking in abstractions, always considering trade-offs, and thinking through problems logically. You just use coding as a medium to apply these skills during your degree. These are still some of the most important skills in industry, and AI has not replaced them yet. Throughout this video, I'm going to focus on the skills you should have learned or should prioritize learning if you're still in school, how you can apply those to any job you want to get, and how to position yourself as a CS major, both for software engineering jobs and jobs in other fields. If you don't know me, I'm RJ. I graduated with a CS and Econ double major three years ago now. I worked at Amazon for two years where I was promoted to software engineer too. And now I work in a hybrid automation role at an A16Z backed startup. I also have a cat that likes to jump on the table and I'm a little bit sick right now, so bear with me. Let's start with what you should have learned in your CS degree. Firstly is systems thinking. Now I have an entire video on this, but I'll break it down for you in 30 seconds. At a high level, systems thinking is just breaking down large problems into components and interaction. It sounds simple, but it's actually a very rare skill outside of technical disciplines. Systems thinking can be simply broken down into three different steps. Number one, identify the problem and requirements. Number two, identify what tools you have at your disposal. This could be software, products, people, or procedures. Number three, design the system and identify trade-offs. Systems thinking applies across disciplines. In software engineering, it usually manifests as how would you implement a software system, different databases, libraries, servers, how do you scale things? All of that is part of system design. But if you were in a different field like marketing and you wanted to design a marketing campaign, you're applying the exact same skills. The problem is you want to bring people to your website. The tools you have are vast, different platforms, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, different influencers you could hire, or you could run paid ads, or you could run something on TV, all different different tools in your toolkit. System design also applies in a field like supply chain management. Suppliers, warehouses, trucks, planes, boats. Do you want to optimize for cost, speed, or reliability? Sound familiar? As a CS major, you should work to develop an understanding of systems thinking as early as possible. It's a highly transferable skill and it's what separates junior from senior employees. Check out my full video in the description if you want more. The second skill you should focus on is abstraction and modeling. You should have learned this when you learned about object-oriented programming. Take a real-world thing and model only the attributes or behaviors that matter for your use case. You don't need to know a customer's favorite color to be able to process their payment. But pretty much every problem you see in business is an abstraction problem. Financial models are abstractions of complex real-world market dynamics. Process optimization is taking a real-world process, creating a model of it, and removing unnecessary steps to eliminate waste. So when you're learning about object-oriented programming, yes, know how to write a clean interface in Java, but also consider what fields you're putting there and why you put those there instead of in the classes that implement that interface. Third, how to make trade-offs. In both software and every discipline in the world, there are costs to everything. You already know this. Think about when you would use a hash map or a binary search tree. Both have different strengths and weaknesses. Now, you can memorize the strengths and weaknesses of every data structure, but the more important skill you're actually learning there is how to make difficult trade-off decisions. In my mind, this is the number one skill that business leaders have. Something that's super important in computer science and beyond is expected value or expected risk calculations. If you don't know how to do it, I suggest you look it up after this video. It takes 10 minutes to learn, and it's been one of the most high leverage skills I've ever implemented in my my career. Number four, iterative problem solving, or as you probably know it, debugging. You never expect your code to work perfectly the first time you run it, or at least I don't. You read the error messages from the compiler, you add print statements, or you use the debugger if you're some kind of god. You trace through the execution, isolate the problem, and eventually you fix it. This process is iterative problem solving, and it's a highly transferable skill. Let's look at how it applies in marketing. Say you run a campaign that does not reach the sales target. Instead of just saying the entire campaign was a failure, you need to isolate what about the campaign made it bad. Was it that you targeted the wrong audience? Was it that your ads just weren't good enough? Was it that once people clicked the ad and made it to your landing page, they didn't want to buy your product because it was too expensive? Test the hypothesis, measure the results, iterate. Debugging, but for business problems. These four skills are what you should have actually learned in your CS degree. Coding was just the median for it. These skills make you super valuable and they apply to almost every problem across every industry. So from here on out, I'm going to assume that you have those skills or you're willing to say you have them on your resume. Here's exactly how to position yourself in interviews and beyond for these not software engineering roles. If you're going to be applying for a non-software engineering role, you do need to be familiar with the domain either way. Here's how I get up to speed in a new domain in just 30 days. First, you need to understand the vocabulary and mental models. I like to start with five one hour plus YouTube videos from the top creators in the space. Then I listen to the top three books in the field on 2x speed. I follow the top 10 practitioners that I can find on X and LinkedIn, and I subscribe to two industry newsletters that everybody reads. This will bring you up to date on current events in the field and help you understand how people in the field like to talk about it. This is 
critical for interviews. Next, I go into case studies and examples. Look at five very successful companies in the space. Understand their business models, growth strategies, and what worked for them. Then read a couple failure cases. What went wrong for them? What can you learn from their mistakes? Week three, I focus on frameworks and first principles. What are the fundamental constraints in this industry and what metric does everybody optimize for? Week four, apply and test. This is basically interview prep. Do a small project, write something about the domain, and get actual feedback from somebody who works in the industry. This approach works for learning marketing, finance, supply chain, or literally any other domain. You just have to commit and be very deliberate about it. You can even talk about executing this exact process in interviews when somebody asks you how you learned about the field. This demonstrates that you have self-awareness and initiative. The first thing you'll have to do is update your resume. And it probably looks something like this right now. Bullet points highlighting exactly what you did from a technical perspective. Maybe you mentioned some outcomes, mentioned the technologies, languages that you've learned in the past. It's actually shockingly easy to adapt your resume for different roles if you know what to optimize for. Let's say you wanted to go for a product management role. Here's how you could tweak those bullet points. Now, instead of emphasizing the technical sides, we're emphasizing the trade-offs that we understood and systems thinking. Let's say you apply for a marketing role. The hiring manager is probably going to ask why you're not applying for engineering roles, and if you don't have a strong answer, they're going to assume it's because you couldn't make it in those roles. I suggest you take ownership of this and explain why you applied for the role before they even get a chance to ask the question. Here's a general framing that I've used a couple times that works pretty well. I studied CS because I wanted to learn how to solve complex problems systematically. During my degree, I realized I'd rather be the person architecting the strategy than implementing someone else's plan. Took an interest in marketing, took a class on it, and self-studied through whatever relevant material, YouTube videos, books, or whatever you want. You can also mention that you're not afraid to get your hands dirty and build tools when needed. Make it clear that you're bringing the ability to build and your engineering mindset, but also some domain expertise into the field, and that's going to make you a unique candidate. At this point, you have domain knowledge, you've updated your resume, and you're ready to start applying for jobs. Not all industries are created equal when it comes to hiring CS majors for non-engineering fields. Some industries are desperate for technical thinkers, and other ones are stuck in the past and will only hire somebody with the degree they need. So these are the top industries that I found where CS majors are valued beyond just technical fields. First is any tech company, product management, technical program management, data analytics, business intelligence. These companies value technical literacy because their main product is software and everybody needs to work with engineers. Your ability to read code, build your own tools when needed, and understand system architecture is a crazy valuable asset for these people. Next, consulting. Consulting loves CS majors. You can easily learn business frameworks and systems thinking is literally the bread and butter. Boutique tech consulting firms hire people for their tech backgrounds all the time. Finance companies beyond quant firms hire CS majors all the time. They need people who can model complex scenarios, understand edge cases, and make difficult trade-off decisions. And small to mid-sized startups would love to hire you. There's a lesser known job at these companies called operator, which is basically just doing stuff. These people wear many, many hats and learn very quickly. You could be writing code for an internal tool one day, filming a TikTok for the marketing team the next day, and then doing business intelligence work for the CEO the next day. This is kind of what I do right now. Some places that are difficult are old school financial companies, big corporate marketing departments, HR, legal, some traditional sales roles, and really any industry that's moving slowly and values the pedigree over actual skills. Now, you guys are going to hate this because 99% of CS majors I meet are allergic to networking for some reason, but you need to network. I have a simple five-step networking process that many people I know have used to get jobs. First, identify companies. Identify 20 to 30 companies you'd actually want to work for. They don't need to have open job postings, but you do need to be interested in them. Next, find alumni connections. Look up your college and the company name on LinkedIn, and they should pop up. If there are no alumni, just try to find someone who you have something in common with. Maybe they're from the same town as you, maybe they're the same ethnicity, something. Prioritize people who work in the role you want and also have a CS or technical background. This will be easier to find than you think. Three, send them a cold DM or email. This is the exact template I like to use. The most important thing when you send out these cold DMs or emails is including a link in your very first DM to book some time with you. Frankly, with a cold DM or email, it is rare that somebody will actually get back to you. And on the off chance that they do and you respond, they might not get back to that email. Including this link to book time with you directly in your first email reduces a ton of friction. Google Calendar lets you do this and so does Calendly if you want some options. Number four, execute the coffee chat. Don't ask for a referral, don't ask if they're hiring, just have a conversation with them and try to be friendly. Ask them how they made the transition from technical to their current role. Ask them what they wish they knew before starting and ask them what skills from their technical background they're still using today. After the meeting, send them a nice follow-up and mention something relevant from the conversation. Then stay in touch, send them a DM once a quarter, comment on their LinkedIn post, just be someone that they are aware of. When a job role at their company opens up, you want them to think of you. If you do networking properly, it's literally just making friends. If this made sense to you and you want to go deeper, I have a free guide linked in the description which goes through this exact process and how to leverage your background as a CS major to land jobs in any field. If you have any specific questions about a certain field or what you should be focusing on, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll try to respond. Please let me know if this type of video was useful to you. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I want to do with the long
long form content on my channel here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.